My guest in this episode of Says and Search is Morty Oberstein. Morty is a talented SEO speaker, podcaster, blogger, and social media influencer. He's presented at SMX West, SMX Advanced, Ungagged, DMI Expo, and many other places. Morty is also one of the most popular SEO podcasters. He's launching a new show called Behind SEOs, where he's already lined up some very impressive guests. In a former life, Morty was a school teacher. It shows in his approach as an SEO educator, and this comes through most in his blogging content. I would encourage you to check out his column at Search Engine Land to learn more. Morty hosts the popular SEO chat, which happens every Thursday at 1 p.m. on Twitter. To join in, simply check out the hashtag SEO chat and begin to participate. Until very recently, he was the CMO at Rank Ranger, the popular SEO tool suite. He recently started a job at Wix as their liaison to the SEO community. In a rare scoop for Suds and Search, we caught up with Morty a couple of weeks into his new job to discuss how things are going. Grab a beer and tune in to learn from one of the really good guys in the industry. We'll talk about featured snippets, algorithm updates, NFL fandom, and the beer scene in Israel. Morty Oberstein, welcome to Suds and Search. How you doing? I'm awesome. I'm I, I'm happy to be on the other side of the mic, to be honest with you. Isn't that, isn't that nice? I was on the other side of the mic on your, on your show. It was a rare treat. Um, this is this is a big one for Suds and Search. We never get a scoop. This is as close to a scoop as we can, <laughs> we can get. The, the multi-talented Morty Oberstein, you you have you're going to a new place. You're at Wix, and a huge gift for Wix. them. Yeah. Um, for for a long time, you were CMO at Rank Ranger. That's how I've how I got to know you. That was my what, thing. What will you be doing at Wix? Um. I, I'm sort of like the SEO advocate or the, the liaison to the to the SEO industry, sort of trying to change perception around Wix and sort of involving the community in what Wix is doing to improve its platform around SEO. Because there's a there's a ton of stuff that, that's already changed and a ton of stuff that's about to change um, in terms of SEO at Wix. And I'm sort of like the contact point between what's happening on the technical side and you know communicating that to the industry. So. Awesome. So what can you communicate so far? You've been on the job, what, two weeks? What, 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 yeah, I, I've been there for like two weeks, okay? So like, you know, give me, give me like a little bit of, I don't even know what I'm allowed to say legally. Um, I see. All right. We're a publicly traded company, but I can tell you that there is a big change coming to site speed um, relatively soon on desktop, and that'll be followed by mobile at some point. The mobile side, I can't give you a timetable. I really, I don't know. But the, 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 the change to desktop site speed is coming relatively soon, and it's, and, and it's very significant. And after that, we'll come uh, mobile doing it in stages. And I, I can't give you a timeline on, on the mobile side. But it's, it's, we're taking it very, very, very seriously, and it's coming, and it should be cool. I mean, I'm very, we're all very excited about it. Well, they're assembling a really nice team. It's not just you. There's some other really yes. top okay, flight so SEOs there. I yeah. definitely want to like dispel this notion like, oh, it's Morty coming in. And there is a, there is a very um, solid technical SEO team. In fact, I got there because um, so what, one of my former podcast guests from Rank Ranger, um, not the Eli Melech, um, who was the CEO of the largest SEO agency in Israel, he left that. And he's, I would say he's considered the top technical SEO in the whole country. And he went to Wix. He's like, hey, why don't you come over with me? And that's how I got to Wix through him. But they have built, and they're still building, a really strong technical SEO team. There's a ton of stuff that's changed. There's a ton of misconceptions out there about Wix and SEO. Like, oh, you can edit your robots.txt. Yes, you can. Um, it's been that way for a while. So like, there's a ton of stuff that's actually changed already. Um, you know, They are catching up, and there's a ton of, there's a ton of stuff that's coming. And I'm, it's really exciting. That that's, I'm, I'm, I'm babbling away because it's very exciting. Well, awesome. Well, I, I want to make sure that some things aren't changing. You are still going to be behind the mic. You still have a podcast. Is this correct? Yes. Um, oh, that's another new thing. So it's called Behind the SEOs. It's a monthly podcast. Um, it's myself and Yosef Silver, another former guest of my former podcasting days, that podcast that shall now rename Nameless. Um, <laughs> and it's it's a it comes out the first Thursday of each month, and it's about the lives of SEO. So not like about SEO per se, but like people you may have seen on Twitter, like who the hell are they actually? Um, like what's all their juicy gossip? How horrible people are they? Or how great of people are they? It's just exploring their lives kind of thing. And um, yeah, as we're talking, it hasn't gone live yet. We haven't done our first, we haven't released our first episode. Yeah. But um, 
I don't know when this episode is coming out, but we've talked to Heather Fiziak. Um, we just finished up with um, Lily Ray. We're talking to um, Arish. So a lot of cool people coming on the show. And it's like fun just to talk about them and like, hear like what's happening in their lives because like they're just cool people. No, no doubt. Like I think that's one of the really fun things about doing this podcast is everyone's very smart and really interesting. They come from totally different yeah. You know, outside outside of work, they have totally different interests. Right. Like Lily's a DJ. I don't know anything about DJing. Um, <laughs> it's, 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 it's fun to meet these people. I like Mike King. I got to talk to, he's a rapper, but not like, right, not like right. he has fun. Like he's like a legitimately excellent rapper. Right. Um, so I, I think it's a great, uh, a, a great concept. Have me on when you want to find out how not horrible somebody can be. Cause you mentioned. Right. Okay. No, yeah, no, no like, I'm joking. No one's been horrible. I, I'm kidding. I always <laughs> it's horrible. Like I'm horrible. Like asking totally inappropriate questions. Like, whatever. <laughs> Um, the, the, the hard part is it's only monthly and we're, we're like dying because we want to have all these people on, but we're like, it's only like 12 people a year. Yeah. So we got, we got to figure this out. Like maybe we'll do it bi-monthly. We'll see. Okay. We'll yeah. See. That's you're, you're, you're used to going at a pretty rapid pace. Yeah. Well, I used to have an editing team behind me. So like, it wasn't uh, really like, you know, I wasn't sitting there editing the audio, but now that that's me actually doing it. So if the audio sucks, that's all my fault now. Okay. Whereas before at Rank Ranger, we had like an amazing, amazing editor. All right. Well, I'll make sure to be very judgmental about the sound of this thing. Yes, please. Uh, Comment. And, uh, and let you know. I, and then Tell me. Uh, and then you're going to – what's your background? Like, did you just listen to the radio a lot as a young youngster? Like, you're very good at the whole I, – I, again, the, 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 I was about to use an example of the way you say the podcast that shall remain nameless, but you have this whole – way of talking where you get excited Did, what's your background on all this is it just uh, um, just listening and, and trying to figure it out i don't know i have a big mouth so that's that's definitely <laughs> helpful i have i'm not drinking beer which is like ridiculous why am i not drinking beer <laughs> totally forgot if I, and it's like it's like 10 40 at night for me i can drink whatever i want now oh yeah uh, and i have my i have my last beer glass that my kids didn't break so yeah you, you and i you and i have bonded over the the young kids crazy life of uh Young parents, but this COVID thing is really, oh man, for us parents. It's the lockdown here. The kids are home. My wife's a nurse, so she's out at work. So I'm like at home with them alone. It's not, it's not good for anybody. Um, my kids are gonna need like, like major help by the time they're done with this. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, do you back to your original question? I used to be a teacher, so maybe that's what it is. Right. Right. I'm used to performing all day long. Which, by the way, the hardest thing you will ever do is teach. Yeah, you knew you were a glutton for punishment when you, yeah, when you signed up for that. I don't uh, know what I was thinking. That was crazy. I mean, it's like literally the most fulfilling and the most insanely ridiculous experience of my entire life. Oh, man, I did it for one year. I was like a volunteer teacher right after college. So we talked about coaching. That's how I got into coaching. Oh, right. Yeah, so, right. Right. How about so. the lines? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we'll see if we, got the, we have time for some NFL topics because okay. the season is off and running. Um, the last thing on your, you're, you're very busy. The SEO chat isn't going anywhere. Um, no, as, as I understand, YouTube, right? I, I'm getting ready. Right. So I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. Uh, right. I, I wanted to ask you about a topic that came up in September that I just, it's gotta be hard to come up with these topics. That's why I'm kind of procrastinating. So I'm trying to come up with my topic, but you had a great one. And that's why I, that's what we have guest hosts. <laughs> <laughs> But I want to compliment you because you guys had a good one about actually just having a career in SEO. And it was like, you know, is it more important what you know or who you know? Or what advice would you give to to somebody just getting started? What what would you say to somebody just getting started? What, what career advice would you give? And what were some of the better answers to those questions? Um, yeah, there's your you know, generic keep learning, which which it, that's a good point. Like there's something I, I would say qualify, like be careful what you learn from. Mm. Yeah. Because there's a lot of junk out there. Um, there's a lot of good stuff. Like if you're a local SEO, I know this guy, Greg Gifford, who does a, a, a weekly video every week on Tuesdays, I believe it comes out, right? Like you can definitely um, check that out. Thanks for like, a little cross promotion for us. I like it. Yeah. Very good. Oh, yeah, I'm, absolutely. <laughs> but like, you know, like I, funny thing is that like, you could like say like, okay, I'm going to start reading, you know, all the beginner's guide to this and, you know, five ways to build backlinks and 10 ways to do this. I would just follow the news. Like I already Barry Schwartz, yeah. so I, 
I plug to Barry Schwartz. Like I would read SEO Roundtable every single day. You get a real feel of like how SEO is evolving and changing. And I don't think people talk about that enough. Like I don't think they focus on that enough. Like how is the ecosystem changing? What is it? What was it? And how do I need to react to it? And yeah. And what, yeah. what role do you think? I'm amazed at how many people kind of got their start or got their big break because of Twitter. Or they, yeah. they, they, they were like, you know, I, I talked to, uh, or like Blake was, was an example of like, he's a great speaker and local. And I asked him about it and he's like, honestly, it was just Twitter. I, I just tried, I, I made friends and uh, little by little, you became part of the community. What, what role does Twitter have in all this? Um, I mean, for me personally, a lot, like there have been people who have helped me along the way, like for, particularly like Barry Schwartz, like he's somebody who has definitely helped uh, my career he's an amazing person who will like, he will plug you and he'll put you out there. And he like, he's trying to do it on purpose to help you out. And, and that's sort of like the Twitter equation notion because it's, it's a lot of it's who, you know, it's like what you know versus who, you know, and it's kind of both. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, I don't want to say it's marketing yourself because I don't like doing that. Like I, I hate marketing myself. I find it awkward. I um, think everybody does. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess that you're a real narcissist. Like maybe like, he's like, this is awesome. I'm so good. Look at me. Yeah. But, um, it's the ability to like show how subs how much substance do you have? Like you have substance. I'm, I'm assuming somebody has substance and they have, you know, to offer and something to say. And it's about like being able to market that. I don't mean that again, a marketing gimmicky kind of way of being able to you know, find the opportunity to showcase that. And then you make, you know, natural connect. People appreciate that. You meet people and the more people, you know, the more opportunities open up and the more, um, you know, things that you never would have thought you would, know or learn or be able to explore kind of just open up naturally. So yeah, it, it's, it's a lot of like what, you know, combined with who, you know, I think you need both. Right. I agree with this. Well, if people want to, uh, want to follow SEO chat, it's Thursdays at yep. one. Is that right? Do I have this? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Thursday I know. Eastern time, like mental note, mental note. I know this is going to be really fun. I'm moving on. I'm closing on a house on Monday, moving on Tuesday. Mind I'm going to be, awesome. it, it could get really interesting on, on Thursday because oh, I think boy. that's when we, that's when we nice. talk. So that'll be good. <laughs> um, I, I, have to, I have to calendar you again, I think, like to, to jot it down. Because my calendar is a disaster because I just left Frank Ranger like two weeks ago and everything was there. And I tried to put it onto my personal email, which is a hot mess. So yes. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll invite you again to remind you. That's All right. Bad. Well, very good. Um, I want to talk to you about, like, I'm a local SEO Sometimes I feel like we aren't considered the sexiest uh, type of SEO there is. You, you kind of talk about these cool topics like uh, <laughs> algorithm updates and eat and all of this stuff. And we met at SMX West. That's where I heard you Hi. do a presentation. And I've been wanting to ask you some questions about this. Sure. You know, hope, hopefully I have answers. You know, we're, we're living in a, in a world of core updates now. So when I first started, if there was an update, it would be like, Okay, for mobile phones, for page speed, it'd be for a specific thing. Right. Now it's harder to pinpoint that. What have you learned from these rolling core updates? Is there any common thread between them? I think there is. I look, like a lot of it's a matter of debate. No one is Google. And, and there's, you know, I, I think it's nice to have the discussion. And I like to preface this. Like, I don't have all the answers. Uh -huh. I'm not a super authority. I have a lot of cool theories about this. And there are people who definitely disagree and take it a different way. I think there's a case for both sides. Like, I'm just going to be, like, um, intellectually honest up front. Um, so, like, you have your unconfirmed updates and you have your core updates. The unconfirmed updates, when I've looked at them, which, like, and re thank you, Rank Ranger, because I still have a lot of my data. That data. I can look at. Yeah. 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 And, and, they, and they let me still have access to a lot of stuff. So, they're awesome. Um, the unconfirmed updates I found to be a little, like, more, like, all over the place. Like, Google rolls out something. And you see that, like, a lot. Like, you'll see, like, Google... Um, we'll roll something out. It's unconfirmed, and then they'll reverse it roll two it days back. Later. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And you see a lot of testing, and I almost feel like that's like prepping for the core updates. They're trying, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and and, and then when, you know they they get a sense of what's working, what's not working, and then they roll up the core update. Like, okay, we're gonna roll out what did work and leave aside what didn't work. Um, with the core updates, I find them ironically to be a little bit more patterned than your average unconfirmed update. And still, like, finding those patterns, like, literally, like, like diving to a needle and, like, in a haystack. And, like, that haystack is the size of the Empire State Building. And sometimes you walk out with, like, 
I have no freaking clue what's going on. More often than not, I'm like, I don't understand what the hell's going on. Yeah. But every once in a while, you kind of walk out like, oh, I kind of see a pattern here. And that makes a lot of sense. And the, the string that I see is that Google is like looking at sites from an authority perspective. Like, who are you? Like, and I think we, like in SEO, we, we like SEO everything. Like, oh, authority. <laughs> authority is your author profile or it's links yeah. or it's all these things, but it's really not. Like, authority is really your identity. Right? Yeah, like, I, that's what you that, mentioned. You use this word yeah. identity. I hadn't heard it before I heard you say it. So no, like you said, like, you said like identity or lack thereof is usually a, a big determinant in these things. What do, what do you yeah. mean by that? Um, I, I mean it like as it actually is. I'm like, I, like, let's take it out of SEO for a second. Like what is authority? And, and I think it's important to do that because that's what Google's trying to do. They're trying to understand authority as a person would. I mean, obviously they can't do that to the extent that we can. They use, as Dennis Sullivan said, various signals to sort of mimic what we would actually do as, pe as people. But like, if you were to walk in, the, I think it's an example I gave at SMX West. I'm just going to use the same one. Um, if you walk into a doctor's office and you ask the doctor and, they ask, and the receptionist said, would you like to see the doctor about your, you know, your throat being on fire? Or would you like to buy a falafel from the doctor? You'd be like, like what the freak? Like the doctor sells falafels? What kind of doctor is this? I'm out of here. And having that singular identity of like, this is what I do. And I'm a professional at this, and this is my expertise, and this is where I'm – it means you're authoritative in this particular area. And spreading out too thin or having too many identities, too broad of an identity, can, can in certain cases take away from your authority. I mean, I, I mean, I guess, in the real world. And it's very much the same thing with Google. Like, if you're going to write – like, imagine, like, a crazy case. Like, you're going to write about um, um, computers, and you're going to write about beer. Yeah. Like, like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, who the hell are you? And I don't think you're an authority about beer because you're talking about computers and what the hell is the connection between the two of them. So right. the stronger your identity is, the stronger your authority is. That's really my, that's this concept that I have. Okay. Do you have any examples of people who are really doing this well? Like people who, who understand this, this new way of uh, putting your identity front and center and taking advantage of these EAT signals? Sorry, I thought your question was going to go on longer, so I tried That's to... That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's time to jump. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, no, it doesn't give me time to think. Um, this, yeah. Obviously, you have, like, Lily Ray's doing a ton of amazing stuff. Like, she is an amazing write-up. Yeah. I forgot when it was, um, but on the Path Interactive blog, she did a whole study of, like, looking at various signals and, and various uh, metrics and seeing, like, what correlates to ranking better as a result of the core updates. And that's a great piece. There are definitely people who are doing a lot of work. Is, and I don't like, there's different ways to look at this. Like, I don't think like, oh, I, I look at it from like an identity. But I, that's the vernacular that I use to understand what's going on. Like, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say okay, that's exactly what Google is doing. Like, that's right. how I'm understanding it. Like, you talk to Marie Haynes. Like, she probably has a different understanding of a very, like, similar concept from a different angle. So, like, there's a lot of those people, uh, Marie Haynes, Lily Ray, who, like, those are two that stand out the most to me, who are really, like, grabbing onto the EAT thing. And understand that Google, look, um, uh, who was it? It was Eli Schwartz gave his example. It said Google has the ability, he at the time lived in San Francisco in the, in the, in the Valley area, and Google was testing out their self-driving car. Mm. And he said that, Google can tell if a squirrel jumps out in front of the car or if a person jumps out in front of the car. Wow. Right? So like, you mean to tell me like this, this sophisticated company that can tell between between a freaking squirrel and a person is like still relying on like basic ranking signals, you know, just your titles and the keyword. Like there's a far more holistic process going on here. And I think there's a lot of people who are jumping onto this. And I think they're getting a lot of flack also at the same time. And I, I resent that to a large degree, because I think they're like totally illegitimately getting flagged for this. But the more holistic of approach you're taking with how you're looking at, at, at SEO, whether it be EAT, or you see it a lot, I think, on the keyword research side. I think people come around to this, like, oh, look at things topically. Yes. Right? Which is like people saying, like, okay, you're taking a way more holistic, and I hate that word, but I don't have a better word for it. Right. You're taking a way more holistic look at how to look at keywords, how to look at... Um, uh, at a given area of, of subject matter. And I think we've come around on that side. And I think that people like Lily Ray or Marie Haynes who are looking at the, the whole thing that way are like way ahead of the curve. Oh, I love it. Um, I, think, I think that's all good stuff. One other, I, I mentioned you like these 
these fun topics. I loved your podcast with Aaron from Gather Up. Uh, local SEO is like I, I recommend it to anybody who wants to learn more about reviews. Your podcast is different than this one. You start out and you talk about something that's interesting to you. Right. Uh, you you kind of have a, an intro before you bring on the guest. I really liked the beginning of that one too, where you're you're talking about writing for featured snippets. Oh yeah. Okay. And it's a little bit. It was it was really good because there is do a Google search. You can find seven articles about how to write for featured snippets. But you yeah. you started to say like in in real in the real world, like sometimes you're going to be talking about string theory or something. I forget how you. How you put it. <laughs> and so like, how are you going to adapt these SEO <laughs> hacks to this complex topic. Uh, maybe give our audience a, a sense of like how to write for featured snippets and how to get over these, uh, these kind of com complex topics. So I have a particular, I'm biased. I have a particular disdain for bull crap. And, and I, I'm not saying like the typical advice is bad, but if you start seeing the same thing over and over and over and over, you have to realize like that author knows that somebody else already wrote this right. and doesn't care. Right, right. But it's like, how authoritative is that? Yeah. And I take that to your EAT. There you go. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, there's different types of content. And I feel as SEOs, we stereotype everything. Right. So we think like, OK, what's content? It's a landing page that's selling Campbell's soup. I use Campbell's soup because it's on the poster behind you. Um, and, and like that's that's what we're trying to rank for. Like, what is Campbell's soup or how to make Campbell's soup? And all these like basic, like top level kind of pages, top level kind of queries. But people are searching for real things. I remember like I was searching, I was doing this research piece, which I never finished. And I'm, I'm trying to finish at some point um, about like what ranks for top level um, health queries. And it's like okay. all like your WebMDs, your Mayo clinics, your Hopkins health, whatever it is. And then I was trying to find like, you know, more real longer tail kind of health queries. I'm like looking at the tools and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I'm not, I wasn't, I'm like my sister was pregnant at the time. She's still pregnant. I'm like, Hey sis, what would you search for? And she gave like, real questions. Like, this is, like, totally different than anything yeah. any of the tools are giving you. Which, by the way, just to show you, like, what the tools are giving you now that I don't work for a tool, right. is generally crap. To yeah. a certain extent, like, it'll give you a general top-level idea of, like, hey, right, um, if you want to cover this topic, these are the general things you might want to talk about. But in terms of, like, what your audience is actually interested in, it's, like, total crap. I mean, yeah, some people yeah. are other tools. I'm not, like... And I'm not trying to you know, crap all over the tools because I used to work for one. Yeah. But at the same time, like, no, like you have to go a little bit deeper. And what I saw those questions were like, they were very intricate. They were very detail oriented. They were very, very real world. And the type of pages you get back for that kind of query is very, very different than what you get back for your typical top level, what we think is a search or what mm. we think represents a, a page in the SEO world. Right. And the example like, I think I gave on the podcast was like, if you're like doing a, a, some kind of like crazy search for like why string theory doesn't align to quantum physics. Which <laughs> right. That was the example. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> like you're going to get back a whole article and it's not going to have, it's not going to have bullet points and it's not going to have a table and it's not going to have your H2. Right. It's probably going to be an essay by some like dude who knows physics or some Judas who knows physics. And it's going to be like way beyond like, – if you try to write a page like that, using right. bullet points and – like, it's ridiculous. And, yeah, and the point was like Google has mechanisms to deal with that. Right. It's called, it's called things like BERT. They're yeah. trying to be able to, be, to pick out answers from less structured content because they know that not all – longer tail – I hate to use that expression – is going to be less formatted because it's just more in-depth kind of kind of content. So I'm not saying you shouldn't do those things that everybody's recommending. I'm just saying like don't like don't do that for a page where it doesn't make any sense to do that too. Yeah. It's well, still, I love it. Yeah, I think I, I think this is this is all great, and I, I would re highly recommend. Maybe I'll put it in the show notes. The whole Aaron uh, interview was great, and he was fantastic. Because I'm, I'm not a local SEO person at all. It's like, 
reviews. Like I should probably, as a CMO, I should probably think about them more than I did. Um, yeah. Just you know, yeah. now I can admit that in hindsight. Yeah. And he was like some amazing, like, he blew my mind how you reuse it. And by the way, it was like, it was like a seamless plug for the tool. It was I know. Cool. He's, he's good. He's good. Um, well, great. Well, before I let you go, I got to hear, uh, what do you think of the Steelers so far? Big Ben, he looks healthy. He looks good. Sometimes that offense kind of has these like, like temporary pauses and that kind of concerns me, but they, they always play like I hate getting my hopes up on the Steelers because they, they, at the end of the day, they always let me down. And I, I know I'm saying there's a spoiled well, rat because we have a well, lot. Listen, of- listen. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Lions just won. The Lions just won for the first time in 12 weeks. So I, I mean, right, uh, right, right. I think you can go like the Steelers won like four Super Bowls in my lifetime. So. That's good. Yeah. At least you're not the Jets, man. Oh, uh, that is a I dumb thought. fire. I think if you had a Jets fan on here, you'd say at least you're not the Lions because that's also – they're, no, they're no, both terrible. I, 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 my brother-in-law is a big Jet fan, and he's uh, like, I have not watched a single snap of Jet football this season. I can't do it. Uh, it is a tire fire there too. Yeah, it's it's no good. Um, well, no, I, I would appreciate it for my fantasy football team if uh, you can make sure Juju Smith-Schuster <laughs> catches a lot more touchdowns. Uh, I'll, I'll let him know. You just kind of give – use your, use your fan – Right. Mentality through the TV, and that would be great. But I, I well, will. Well, Maury, uh, how do people get in touch with you? What's the best way to contact you? Um, Twitter. Twitter is good, at Morty Oberstein. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn. Don't really do Facebook and Instagram and that stuff. Snapchat, nope. TikTok, no. So Twitter and, and, Insta- and Instagram and, um, and LinkedIn. But mostly, mostly Twitter. I'm on Twitter. All right. Well, congratulations on, on the new job at Wix. You're one of the really great guys in SEO. So I'm happy to see good things happen to good people. So I really uh, appreciate it. Good luck right. at the job. And, and thanks again for coming on. My dude, thanks for hosting me. This is awesome. All right. Let's do a, a, a virtual cheers. It's probably now uh, 11 o'clock where you are. Thanks yeah. again for coming on. And uh, hopefully the kids aren't still up and you can get some rest. No, they're, they're, they're sleeping. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. Well, thanks for doing this. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, man. Take care.